again everybody today I'm back out here working on the Silverado the gasification of the Silverado and I'm gonna go through real quick what all I've got done so far and basically where we're going with it by the way if y'all remember this thing uh, it is a portable diesel heater that I have added a box on the bottom with the battery in and stuff, so it's completely portable. I would recommend anyone that works outside or uh, runs equipment that doesn't have a cab on it or doesn't have a heater to get one of these because that makes a world of difference. Just look out here right now, it's cold, it's freezing temperatures, and just the uh, fact that I can put my hand in front of that and warm my fingers up that makes a world of difference now I did let the battery run down some so I'm having to run it off of the battery charger right now uh, which is fine it doesn't hurt anything but while I'm crawling around underneath the truck having that heat blowing under there it kind of lingers under the truck it's pretty nice but let me show you what I'm doing here Okay, so you know I already have the gasifier mounted. And you can see the plumbing going up into the middle part of the rails. Now the rails, let me get up inside the truck. So as you can see, it comes out of the, the output of the gasifier up, through here, through... I don't know how this is going to last. I do have something else in mind for this if this doesn't hold up. But for right now, that's what I got. Now, the gases will come in here and they will disperse both ways. They're going to go in, going to go that way, and they're going to go that way. Some of the gases will go through this, but not as much because, as you can see, that part is behind the cab anyway. You're not going to get very much airflow there anyway. But what little bit of airflow you can get through there Oh, these lights are not going to be there. They'll melt. So, yeah, those will not be there. But um, as the air and gas goes through these, these down here, it will also cool a little bit. But there will be some ash dropping out, and I can clean it out through that. I'm designing this so that I can very easily remove this from the truck and take a hose and clean it out really easily. Um, so I've just got, I've just got it bolted on both sides. You can see a few of the bolts. I am going to pull it all back off and paint it and probably grind down my welds where I had to go over. So I had it all welded, uh, tested it for leaks, had a leak right there, and I had to kind of gob some on it to stop the leak. So, you know, you know how that goes. So I didn't even worry about making the welds pretty. Um, but anyway, okay, your gas comes in here, splits, goes both ways. The main part of the gas where it's out in the wind is going to go through these top rails and down the side rail right here and then down through the, or over top of the bedside through this pipe. And I have the same setup over here. And these are all removable fittings. Like I say, I take those bolts off. I can take these fittings loose. Comes back here. As you can see, it runs back through here and it goes down into the bed. In order to cut this out, I had to cut out a little hole here. But I had to cut out the stake pockets so that the pipes would go all the way through. All I really had to do was cut this part out and it went all the way down through and it's a fairly tight fit. It's not, it's not moving or anything. And I did that the same way on both sides, as you can see. So yeah, we have the cooling racks on here. Uh, like I said, I still don't have the insulation around it. I still don't have my condensate drip tank for the hopper, the tar tank still don't have that on there but see all this stuff you know I'm just working on it as I can and about that now I am finally laid off I am no longer working until probably around April so I have time to actually sit and work on stuff like this uh, 
this is my time of the year for doing projects so um, yeah I'll be posting more often because I'll have time to and uh, also when the weather allows because the rest of this week the first week that I'm laid off there is rain every single day so uh, I'm doing this early while it's still cold because I want to have this amount of time to work on this before it starts raining which is not very far off so <laughs> we're gonna do what we can when we can but anyway I am gonna work on the condensate tank under the bed let me show you that okay so we are under the bed and some of you may recognize what this is the oil change uh, container that you throw underneath of your vehicle to drain oil into. It's a fairly thick, it's not super thick, but it's a fairly thick plastic. I think it will be okay. And it's pretty much fit right in here. So I think it will work just fine. Uh, now there are two caps, like there's a drain cap down in there. And there's another one over here somewhere. Those are uh, super glued in so they can't leak and I've already I had done an oil change for my truck and so I went ahead and I checked to make sure nothing was leaking. Uh, this one will be where I can drain the condensate out. Now if I need a bigger hole to drain it through I can always drill and put a bigger uh, bigger connector. Now down here there is one of the pipes coming down through. I need to cut this out so that the pipe can come straight out. And I actually have to cut the pipe off a little so it can fit over top of the frame up here and go into the side of this. Wherever it hits, I'll drill a hole and I've got some connectors to put in there. Now in the front, is where we will have our lines coming out and they will have to come out of here and looks like I'm gonna to have to 90 it because I did put this cross member in place because this is where the shock is mounted they're gonna get in the way a little but I can still get my pipes over top of here should probably take that all out these are all rusted to where they don't hold anymore so I probably need to this is where my rattling when I'm driving down the road, that's where I'm getting my rattle from, so I need to take all that out. But that's okay. Now, I'm gonna go on up through under that one also, or over it, over top of that that bar, and I'm gonna go all the way up and go up to the bed. Okay, so I figured out that, <laughs> which a lot of y'all probably already knew, <laughs> this won't work. The plastic is not super thin, but where it's molded around the edges here, it does have a weak spot. And when I push it up in on top of that cross member, it kind of broke it there. So if just that will break it, I don't want to use it. So what we've done, let me pause. You. Okay, so what I've done is uh, this is actually just a plug for right now. But what it's going to do eventually, since I've already got everything plumbed up, um, I wanted to go ahead and get everything plumbed. But this will go into a 90 and down into, I'm thinking I'm going to get a like a 6 inch pipe or a 4 inch pipe or something like that that I can run this down into. And that will be my condensate tank. Uh, as you can see, I've got that coming out of that out of the bed out of the cooling rail right here had to bend it use a torch to heat it and i can bend it and i also had to cut a hole through the frame it's very strong anyway this hole is not going to hurt it it's right at the end too so yeah had to do the same thing over here to get that pipe through these two come in and they are sloped towards where the uh, condensate tank is going to be. For right now, 
I could probably run it for just a little bit just to see how it would work. I've got a screw here to loosen up to let the water out. But uh, it wouldn't hold very much condensate. So I've left this with enough room I can cut that, put a 90 on, and come straight down into a pipe here. Okay, now this pipe uh, comes out of there. And it comes out high so that it can go forward. Had to bend it around stuff there. Use the torch again. And I'll show you where that goes, where it comes up at. Okay, so this is not going to be my permanent filter. Um, it's what I have right now. I did pick up another, uh, it's actually a 55 gallon drum. And I intended maybe to use that as a filter, but when I got to looking, I kind of would like to keep my spare where it's at. And with a smaller filter, I can do that. Now, what I've basically done is this used to be the condensate tank and the filter for the uh, Cavalier. So what I have done is in the bottom here, it's not snapped on yet. I've got hay. And then that goes with a two inch pipe in between those two. This is also full of hay and it also has, let me pop the top of it off. Okay, take that off. Actually, I think I need to put more hay in it. Um, and I've got a screen in here to prevent the hay from being sucked into this pipe. And this pipe is what is going to have the filtered air coming out and it can go to the engine. I don't know if with this small V8 I'm going to really need two two inch lines. Um, it's not a real big engine so I don't know if the demand is going to be there and I also don't know how I would run the lines. It's going to be hard enough to get one two inch line up there. I'm going to probably come out of here and I'm going to drop down. Now I do need my blowers somewhere and I'm thinking um, on breaking the pipe I don't want my fans under the truck because I do drive through water at times and it gets up pretty high because I live up a creek so there's times I have to drive through the water and it's pretty deep so uh, when I go through the water I don't want it to ruin my fans so I'm wanting them up here so I don't know if I should go ahead and let them run through the filter which I don't think that's needed I think uh, actually, it's preferred not to run the freshly lit gas through the filter. I think it's preferred to run a line from there or from the condensate tank in the back to the fans. Because I think once you pull, if you are making any tar in this, then it will pull the tar all the way through and through the filter as well. So... That's when you end up with tar in your main line. So I think if I have a T on here or else when I get my pipe under here, my big three inch pipe or whatever, if I pipe out of it with the, um, the fans, I may pipe them out and bring them up so that they're above the level of the truck bed. Uh, like I said, I don't want them under the bed because they'll get wet. I mean, they'll get completely submerged in the water, not just splashed. So, yeah. Anyway, that's as far as I've got so far. Yeah, that's about as far as I've got today. I've got a few more things to get, of course. Like always, I run out of materials and have to get more stuff. Um, also, it is getting ready to rain, and I've got a lot of tools and stuff that i got to put up. I don't want to get them wet, so... I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I guess I'm going to close this video out. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll see y'all on the next one.